In this problem, we have 10 identical cubes. And we're, we're asked to construct from those 10 identical cubes every rectangular prism that's possible, find the volume and surface area of those prisms, and then compare to, to figure out which of those shapes has the most surface area and which have the least surface area, which, and, and of course the volumes would be identical because we're using the same amount of cubes, but we'll see that in a moment. So, so let's sketch every rectangular prism that we can. And before you get overwhelmed, let's make an observation. Every prism is made from a length and a width and a height, right? And when we multiply to find the volume of the length and the width and the height, in every case you have to get 10. So 10 always equals the volume. So the question is, what lengths, widths, and heights multiply to a volume of 10? Well, fortunately, there are only two, right? I can multiply a 1 by a 1 by a 10, and that gives me a volume of 10. What else can I do? Well, 1 times 2 times 5, excuse me, that is also a volume of 10. But there are no others. I mean, there are permutations of these two. We can rearrange the orders, but they're still the same shape. So all we have to do in this problem is actually sketch out right, these two shapes. So let's, let's call this shape number one, and let's call this one shape number two. So let's start with shape number one. It's one by one by ten. So it's one cube, right? One by one, and then we're going to go ten cubes in a row here. Let's sketch that out. This is my rough sketch. And you can always picture the ten cubes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then room for some more. Eight, nine, ten. So it's ten cubes in a row. So the one dimension here is ten. I guess we can call that the length. And the width is one. W is one. And the height is one. So the volume is ten, right? It has ten cubes. But the surface area, we can look at, well, there's the front here. It has an area of, of one. And so does the back. Right, it also has an area of 1. So, so far, our surface area equals the front area, the area of the front face, plus the rear face, plus these, these four other sides, 1, 2, the left side, and bottom. They're all the same. And each of these have 10 squares, so they each have an area of 10. All four sides have an all four faces, excuse me, have an area of 10, so that's 40 more. So this surface area is 42... I don't know what our unit is, maybe it's inches here or whatever, but square inches or square centimeters. So volume of 10 and a surface area of 42. What about our second shape? This is 1, right, by 2, so 1 by 2, by 5. So it's 5 deep here. Let's sketch this out the best I can. Here we go. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then... One more back here. Okay. So see, this is 10 cubes again arranged in a different way with a height of 1, a width of 2, and a length of 5. So in a way, this shape is much more compact. So it's, it's more condensed. It's not as stretched out as this one. And that's a giveaway to me that the surface area will be less. So let's just calculate that real quick to confirm. The front area here is 2. So is the rear. It matches that. The top here is just 10, and so is the bottom, they're identical. The right side is 5, 5, right, 5 by 1 is 5, and the left side is 5. Add these up, 10, 20, 34. So the surface area is 34 square inches, much less than the other. And I'll, I'll, maybe we'll talk more about that in other videos about why this makes sense. Anyway, thanks, hope this helped.